is the gift of walking miracles by the sovereign spirit. We're coming to First Corinthians chapter 12. We're reading from verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And then in verse 7, it says, But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit whether look at verse 10 it says to another the walking of miracles to another the walking of miracles three things we're looking at here number one the gift of the walking of miracles the gift is a gift elisha added the gift, Elijah added, the gift, Daniel added, the gift, Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego added, the gift of the walking of miracles. The apostles of the Lord Jesus and Paul that came later, they had the gift of the walking of miracles. Number two, the gracelessness of wonders after miracles. The gracelessness of wonders after miracles they don't have a solid ground and they don't have a stable life and they do not have a steadfast following of the lord anywhere they hear noise happening there something happening there they wonder here and there and they do not have the grace of god to recognize which one is proper and which one is improper which one is uh, right and which one is wrong which one is good and which one is evil gracelessness of wondrous after miracles number three is the grief of wayward workers of miracles let's look at number one number one is the gift of the walking of miracles we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 34 and we're reading from verse 10 deuteronomy chapter 34 we're reading from verse 10 and there arose not a prophet since in israel like unto moses whom the lord knew face to face in verse 11 it says in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. Then in verse 12, it says, And in all that mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel, he was here the gift of the walking of miracles since he met the Lord. And the Lord asked, was that in your hand? And he said, it's a rod. And the Lord said, throw it down. And it became a serpent. Pick it up again. And then it became a rod. And then he went to Pharaoh. Let my people go. And Pharaoh said, show me why I should let your people go. And show me a miracle. He threw that rod down, became a serpent. And Pharaoh said, that's no big deal. And called his magicians. And they threw their rods down. But the greater miracle, the rod of Moses swallowed up all their rods. And they lost their power. And all those miracles in the land of Egypt and then in the wilderness, the dividing of the Red Sea and then also the bringing of manna from heaven and the defeat of the Amalekites. Anytime he raised up the rod, Joshua will be conquering when he let down his hand, then he'll be conquering Joshua. A lot of miracles that happened, water coming out of the rod miracle the gift of the walking of miracles what are we going to say about elijah what do we say about elisha and what do we say about all those other great men of god in the old testament they had the gift and I pray today, because they have all gone, today as the Lord is raising up ministers and raising up pastors and raising up preachers, raising up apostles, I pray that the Lord will shower his gift of the working of miracles on all the people of God in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 15. We're looking at verse 12. Acts chapter 15. Verse 12, then all the multitude kept silence 
and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul declaring what miracles and wonders miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them the Lord did it for them the Lord will do it for us through us and in us in Jesus name number two now number two is the gracelessness of wondrous after miracles those who run about miracle miracle or they're looking for miracle they lose salvation they lose their conviction they lose all the good things they've got because they are running after miracles look at john chapter 6 we're reading from verse 25 john chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 25 and when they had found him on the other side of the sea they said unto him rabbi master teacher when camest thou hither look at verse 26 it says jesus answered them and said verily verily i say unto you you seek me not because you saw the miracles but because ye did each of the loaves and were filled they saw the multiplication of bread and they ate that but they didn't think through about it that this kind of miracle we've never seen anything like this before we filled loaves and a few pieces of fish that the Lord will feed 5,000, not counting, not counting the women or the children, that if he can do this, he can take care of their spiritual life. He can fix their problems. He can do every other thing and he can give themselves totally, abandon themselves and surrender themselves unto the Lord. They didn't think like that. And Jesus said in verse 27, he says, labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as God the Father sealed. Look at verse 60. In verse 60 it says, Many therefore of his disciples, when they had this said, this is an hard saying who can hear it. And then in verse 66, it says, From that time, many of his disciples went back, they were looking for miracles. They were not looking for eternal life. They were looking for forgiveness of sin. They are not looking for their names written in the book of life. They are not asking for freedom and power over sin. They are not looking for victory over temptation and trials. All they were looking for was miracle, miracle, multiply the bread and multiply the water and give us, let's see, miracle. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him look at john chapter 12 verse 37 john chapter 12 verse 37 but though he had done so many miracles before them yet they believed not on him they wanted the bread they wanted the physical miracles but they did want the faith that will lead them to forgiveness and to change of life even though he had wrought he had done many miracles before them yet they believed not on him look at number three here number three is the grief of wayward workers of miracles there are people who themselves they want to be walking miracles they don't care about sanctification they don't care about holiness without which no man shall save the lord they do not care about the change of life and the transformation of life all they want is if i could perform miracles if i could make blind eyes to open if i can make lame lame people to rise up and walk if i can do some spectacular things stupendous things some exploits and they do not take care of their personal lives we watch walkers of miracles look at matthew chapter 7 
from verse 21, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Which one is more important to you? The power to do the will of God in heaven and the grace to do the will of God in heaven, the power, the strength to be obedient to the word of God every time and to overcome temptation and to be triumphant over every evil habit. Is that what's important to you? To be able to do the will of God at home, in church, in the office, anywhere you find yourself doing the will of God and the Spirit of God bearing witness in your heart that you are living in righteousness and in that holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. All what you want is that you want to be able to say, I did this, I did this, I manifested power, I manifested anointing. It says not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And I was saying, which one is important to you? Is it to be able to say, I cast out devils, I made the sick to rise up, and I made them to walk? Which one is important to you? The grace to live a righteous life, a victorious life, a holy life, and to do the will of God, whether you're at home or you're in church, whether you're in the office or you're on the crossroad, anywhere you find yourself, the power and the strength and the spiritual pungency to be able to have a life which is glorifying to God that's what takes us to heaven but if you are running after I need to do miracle I need to do wonders I need to do this and that where will you be on the final day Jesus Christ himself said not everyone that says unto me Lord Lord not everyone that just says superficially I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord not the people that say superficially that I'm following after the Lord but the people that do the will of God who is in heaven those are the people that will get to heaven I don't want to be a miracle worker and then miss heaven you don't want to be a miracle worker and then lose heaven you want to be able to say I got saved and the Lord put my feet on the way to heaven he sanctified me he purified me he put my feet on the way to heaven I want to be able to say I follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and then when the trumpet shall sound the people that will go on that final day they're not the people that say I raised the dead I cast out devils I did this I did that in your name he will say look at verse 22 it tells us in verse 22 many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name there we are that's what some people are looking for that's all they're thinking about and it says in thy name have we cast out devils in thy name have we done many wonderful works and then in verse 23 Jesus said then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity you understand that I never knew you that means they were never born again I never knew you they were never in the kingdom of God. I never knew you. They didn't repent of their sins. They didn't turn to the Lord. They didn't have a new life. All they were doing is, I want to prophesy. I want to cast out devils. I want to heal the sick. I want to raise the dead. And then on that final day, when they will not be able to turn around and repent, on that final day, when they will not be able to make amends on that final day, when they will not be able to correct all the things that were wrong, then when I prophesy face unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity I pray that will not happen to you it will not happen to me say it will not happen to me 
Hey, look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. It says, even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. When somebody does not have salvation, when somebody does not have a heart of holiness, a heart of purity, a heart that is totally given and surrendered, unto the Lord all is asking for I want to walk miracle I want to see miracle they give in to lying wonders and they give in to signs and powers that deceive then it says in verse 10 it says with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish in all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What they wanted was just the spectacular, the extraordinary, and the exploits, but the real grace of God and the godliness and the new life and the change of life and the life that glorifies God, all that they're not interested in. And then they're deceived because of the things they're running after. I pray you'll not be deceived. I will not be deceived with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You see, they were not saved. They didn't pay attention to repentance. They didn't pay attention to running away from their sins. They didn't pay attention to that righteousness that Christ will give when we turn away from sin and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So they were not saved. All they were running after uh, gifts of miracle, gifts of this and gifts of that. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, it tells us for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You know, there are lies behind uh, all those uh, miracles that are not centered on Christ, that are not centered on holiness, that are not centered on purity of heart, that are not centered on the desire to get to heaven. And then, because that's what they want to believe, and God will give them, uh, will give them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And then in verse 12, it says that they all, all of them, all of them, the wayward workers of miracle and the wanderers after miracle, all of them together combined, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The people that know that those miracle workers and those uh, sign givers and those uh, pray for me, pray for me, prophet, they know that they're living in unrighteousness but they are satisfied and they appreciate them and they run after them. And it says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I pray that will not happen to you or any of us in Jesus' name. The Lord wants us to understand what is the important thing and to concentrate on that important thing. Make sure there's salvation and make sure that you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and you know that he died for you and you believe on him. He has cleansed you. He has washed you. He has taken away all your sin. And then after that too, you understand, after you are saved, you seek the face of the Lord so he will purify you and so he will sanctify you because he is the sanctifier. He that sanctifies, and those who are sanctified, they are all, all of one. Or because of that, is not ashamed to call them brethren. Be a real child of God. And then, if any problem comes, if any challenge comes, because you are praying ground, you can pray the prayer of faith. And as you call upon the Lord, if you are sick yourself, you'll be healed in Jesus' name. 
and if it's another person a close by person a lot one that is sick as you believe the lord this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they cast out devils in my name they speak with no tongue and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they'll take up serpents and throw them away and they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover where are those people they lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover the lord fulfill it in our lives as a believing church in jesus name now you are going to examine your life where do you stand where are you are you saved are you sanctified are you filled with the holy ghost and are you walking in the way of the lord do you exalt the word above every other thing in your life are you giving to the word submissive to the word are you totally surrendered unto the word if you are like that then it will not take time all the gifts that god knows that you need that you'll not be proud and the gifts they knows that you need that you'll not be full of self it will grant unto to you in Jesus' name.